has required a number of funding, amount of funding required to sustain these layers. Many district associations are not active, and this hampers sports development through associations. The Sports Development Act also currently caters for too wide a range of sports under the first schedule of the Act, martial arts, recreational, being an example. So we want to narrow down and focus on specific sports so that we can better regulate the industry. We've spoken to a range of government agencies, academic experts, sports lawyers, former athletes, sports associations, and others in coming up with amendments to the Act. These are the more obvious reasons why amendments to the Act have to be made. And notwithstanding the reasons that I mentioned, there are also a few less apparent, but also equally important ones. Firstly, the Paralympic Association of Malaysia is not currently given recognition under the Act. Paralympics and the development of sports for the physically and intellectually challenged is an area that we've, rarely, that we've really looked into over the last few years. One of my first acts as Minister of Youth and Sports was to ensure that the physically and intellectually challenged athletes got the same incentive bonus for winning medals at international events as able-bodied athletes. So there's parity for Paralympic athletes now in Malaysia. We've also set up the Inspire program to find and train these athletes at the grassroots levels. The ASEAN Para Games starts today in Singapore, and I'll be there over the weekend. Now the Paralympic Association getting equal recognition under the Act is imperative for me to move forward in this area. As you also know, doping is currently a hot topic, not only in Malaysia's, Malaysian sports, but all around the world. In the last year alone, we've seen cases involving the world number one badminton, the International Association of Athletics Federation, the Champions League, Tour de France, just to name a few. This is a worldwide issue. We're taking this issue very, very seriously in Malaysia. We've adopted a culture of zero tolerance and we've acted in a few important strategic ways. Firstly, we want to strengthen the relevant agency, ADAMAS, or the Anti-Doping Agency of Malaysia, to ensure that they're able to test more athletes and when they're training and just before they go to international competition. We will recognize ADAMAS officially as a body that is in charge of anti-doping through the amendment to the Sports Development Act. We will also move towards ADAMAS having its own parliamentary act to strengthen it even further as an independent agency. Earlier this year, sports associations signed the acceptance of ADAMAS anti-doping rules and we want to ensure that this is enforced. It will also be amiss to not mention the KL Center for Regional Arbitration under the director, Dato Sundar Raju here. KLRCA signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Court of Arbitration of Sports in 2012. The Malaysian Sports Arbitration Tribunal is also something suggested to be formed, with it being an option if both parties in dispute decide to use it. We've also been receiving proposals and considering the formation of internal tribunals for sports association disputes that will allow the minister to send cases their way in case the tribunal under the KLRCA is expensive for people to bring cases to it. This tribunal, the suggestion is, chaired by an ex-judge, will include two other people who are experts in that field. Now this proposal, the proposal by the KLRCA, is currently with the Sports Advisory Panel, and we're, we're looking to put this into the Sports Development Act amendments. Now here I'd like to echo what uh, Richard said earlier. I think the Sports Development Act is something, as I said earlier, which vests a lot of power in the minister. And I often have to spend my time not just ensuring policy and program for sports development runs smoothly, but also to resolve disputes in sports. Now, it's very, very tedious for the minister to have to decide and sometimes to have to resolve disputes involving sports associations and sports clubs. And I believe that the way forward is to try to institutionalize a dispute settlement mechanism. Now, it's very, very difficult to get a politician to give up his powers or her powers. <laughs> but uh, I, believe, I believe that in this particular case, we have to move away from the discretionary power of the minister under the Sports Development Act to something that is more institutionalized where clubs and associations can bring their cases and to have it uh, arbitrated quickly and cost-effectively where people are confident with the arbitration 
and disputes can be settled quickly that way. Otherwise, there's a, a, a pile of files on my table involving uh, sports association, associations and sports clubs, and it's very, very difficult for a politician to become an arbitrator in some of these cases. Because in Malaysia, sports associations are run, and sometimes the disputes involve people who are running sports associations who are also prominent people in society. So often I have two prominent people coming to see me, and in true Malaysian style, they come and see the minister and say, Tolong sikit lah, brother, you know? <laughs> and then this Tolong sikit lah, brother is not the way to run sports in Malaysia. You know, we must be able to institutionalize this. I have two countries coming to see me, both vying for the same position, president of X Sports Association, and there's a dispute on a one word in the constitution. And that one word has led to, you know, the office of the association being seized, you know, bank accounts being frozen, gangsters being sent to ensure that the AGM does not take place. It's worse than UMNO politics, I've heard so far. It's crazy. So, uh, so I, think that, um, I think that we have to move forward. We have to move forward and we have to clearly outline in the act itself what the dispute settlement mechanism is going forward. And of course, uh, there is pushback from the uh, sports administrative fraternity, i.e. government, that says that, no, Minister, you must retain your power because uh, that, uh, that should be the last word as far as dispute settlement is concerned. <coughs> Uh, I've I'm I'm still undecided on, on this particular matter. I've kicked it upstairs to the Sports Advisory Panel, which is again another creation of the Sports Development Act, which is the Council of Wise Men and Women, which uh, advise me on uh, dispute settlement when I don't want to make a decision, or can't make a decision, when I don't want to make a decision, I'll say that it's with the Sports Advisory Panel, which is chaired by uh, Tona Masaji. It's a brilliant way for politicians to not take the blame, say you know, somebody else decided with me. Uh, but, uh, but I think, you know, in, in the spirit of wanting to place Malaysia on the international map as a place for sports law, as a place for sports arbitration, we have to demonstrate to the international community that the administration of Malaysian sports is done transparently and based on institutions 